as we can see, we're really sort of uh, taking from Carl's big picture, now looking at the pragmatic, pragmatic approach, the practical approach, how do we make this work? So Stephanie, with all of this in play and no pressure as our representative national sales and business leader here, what do you suggest business leaders, especially sales leaders need to do to make sure their sales teams are well equipped and capable of adapting to and making, mo making the most of these market opportunities, changes in buyer sentiment, and really effectively engaging with customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, uh, Sue, and no pressure. Um, I think listening to the panelists today and even reading back on the 2020 trends myself, um, it was clear um, before we entered uh, the current decade um, that there was a demand for change and a demand for a better way of how we want to run our company, um, companies, run our cities, um, run our communities. And, um, you know, what's become very apparent today is it's complex and it's hard and we need to really think differently and we need to be bold in, in how we do that. Um, and the pandemic has certainly accelerated um, a lot of that um, for our governments um, uh, and our and our businesses to do that and, and you know in particular in the last 12 months we've all been grappling with that um, how do we need to think today to make a meaningful contribution tomorrow when I think about you know the last 12 months as a business leader in a in a large um, company that is about building communities um, for people um, first and foremost I think for leaders of sales teams and businesses you need to lead um, with purpose and profit in mind um, with real genuine care for the communities and the consumers that, that you are servicing. Um, your you know, employees um, want to know that they are working for brands that are making that meaningful contribution and they are your biggest advocates and they are the ones that are standing in front of your consumers. So particularly for sales um, organisations, that is really, really important. Now, we are now starting to lead um, with different expectations um, of brands um, and we need to make sure that our people are really, are really holding that together. Um, strategies um, now need to be more adaptive and agile. So we need to be really curious um, um, and have that real curious mindset. No longer are we just selling products. Um, we need to understand who those customers are today and tomorrow um, and really make sure that we are thinking about how we're going to be servicing those customers. What do they need? What needs to change in the service model, but also how you are actually distributing your products. And you need to be really intentional. As I said, it's very complex. There's a lot that you need to be thinking about and it's changing rapidly. So being able to have a very intentional but agile plan is really important and linking your people back to that is key. And that extends to for particularly sales leaders and sales managers is, is moving um, to more of an adaptive leadership approach um, not necessarily holding, um, holding on to the technical that you have. Um, and that means that you're able to lead through disruption. You're able to work through that complexity. You make different choices as a result of that. And you're, you're able to, you know, weigh up the risk and, re and reward of the changes that you make, particularly where you are um, a company that, um, and or a brand um, that is very traditional in nature. And I work in the property industry and we have not innovated rapidly for 25 odd years, particularly the way in which we sell property. Um, you know, in the last six months, particularly in Melbourne, we have been forced to really think differently about that. Um, so it is, it is that time for change. The other one that's become pretty, pretty clear um, in the last 12 months is this uh, uh, expectation of ethical leadership businesses and sales practices. Um, we're seeing this through the way that our governments are being run. We're seeing this through corporate Australia, that there is a different level of standards that we are holding businesses to as consumers, as people, um, and we need to be able to respond to that. So making sure that um, you are um, building your businesses and your people with integrity at the core of what you do, um, doing what you say, um, is, is really important for the betterment of others. Um, and responsible selling practices is, is, a must, is a must. You must have that as part of the way in which you are uh, responding to your customers. So sales processes, playbooks, um, they all need to change to be thinking about the landscape that we're operating in. Um, and I think we also need to be thinking about, you know, it's just the right thing to do. Um, as I said before, if we're leading with purpose and profit, then that will come. 
Um, consumers, employers are all seeking, um, that we're all seeking safety, we're all, seek, we're all seeking certainty and we're all still seeking an element of status. We are definitely in a period of selling certainty to our consumers. So making sure that we've, we're really clear on how we're doing that. Um, understanding your customers is absolutely paramount now. There is a shift. Um, and the question is, how big is that shift in lots of different industries? As you said, Toby, we are seeing a shift in how we want to live. Um, is that going to be systemic now or do we go back to the, to the old? There is a new norm there, but what does that look like? Um, how, do we, how do we do that? And how do we make sure that we help customers, customers make better decisions in what they're doing? But on the flip side of that is also around this need to be uh, supporting your staff um, your selling organisation through um, better ways of wellbeing. That has become very paramount, particularly for sales, um, for sales teams um, who are being asked and thrust into a different way of doing what they're doing. Um, again, I can speak for my team. For six months, we've been selling property um, from the comfort of our home. Who would have thought that you would be doing that? Um, making sure that those teams can adjust to a very different way of being able to do their role also means you need to invest in them, in them and their wellbeing to make sure that they can actually make that leap that you're asking them to do. Sounds pretty basic, but every company is going through that. We have an obligation now to care about the physical and mental wellbeing of our people because that extends to our communities and our customers that we're servicing. Um, sales teams have no choice now but to adapt their traditional ways of selling. But it doesn't mean you have to move away from those traditional ways. There is this new blend that needs to be considered. And that's why we do need leaders to think differently. And they need to be um, considering um, uh, the way in which they are looking at the global stage and the local stage to make those decisions and looking outside of their industries to see how they um, can adapt. Um, you know, and I think we're learning, um, we are learning that, um, you know, as part of that, we need to be really conscious of people's cognitive load. Um, it's a new new term I've certainly learned a lot about um, of late, but this is really about if we're starting to build new skills and we're starting to do things differently, we need to be really conscious of how that plays out for our people and even our customers, because you will see different um, threat states come through as a result of that. Um, so, you know, this need to manage through change, through uncertainty is pretty key. And coaching for resilience, I think, is absolutely paramount for managers and leaders um, today. Um, I think we all know that technology, and it came through today, technology is a game changer. I think we've been thrust into a, now is the time that if you're not considering how technology is going to enable your business, um, be it your supply chain, be it your service strategy, be it disrupting your actual um, distribution of your products. Um, I think you're in the you, you're not thinking properly about how how you want to transform. But we're there. Um, you know, for sales teams, um, it's always been you know the, probably the view is we just collect data for the business, but we don't know how to turn that into something that's quite powerful for us. Sales organisations need to move for understanding the digital of technology and data together that helps you do what you need to do faster, smarter, quicker. That is the aim of the game. But also, how do you understand your customer faster than anybody else? Being able to intimately understand what makes them tick today and tomorrow, being able to understand those new segments, being able to pick up those new trends quickly, being able to predict what may or may not be happening to make better decisions or weigh up the choices that you may need to make are really important. And if you have that information, um, you are gonna be in a far better place to be able to have really agile and adaptive strategies. And on the flip side of that is, you know, really thinking about um, what are the elements of technology that make sense um, for your sales organization. You know, certainly virtual has definitely been one that, you know, we've all been thrust into, um, you know, it, it it's a piece of technology that is also reminding us that, um, and, and was in, in the trends report, that human connection is still really important. We're not gonna be taken over by technology and digital, but there is a need for humans to be able to connect in a certain way. Um, maybe Microsoft knew this was coming and that's why we all have Teams and Zoom, I don't know. But you know, it's, it's changed the way we're engaging with people. It's changing the relationships that we're having. It's changing the way that we're able to work differently and collaboratively. So 
Now that's not going to change. Um, it's how do we adapt that through and how do we think about how do we use that commercially in a way that makes sense. And I think finally for me um, is capabilities. Um, capabilities need to transform, um, be it um, people, process, systems and platforms. You need to have a really clear um, view around your operating model, around how are you going to invest in those, when and how and what makes sense. Um, from a capabilities, from a people perspective, I think it's, you know, particularly for sales, it, it's always been very much around understanding product and being able to service customers. But I think it's deeper than that now. I think we should be building capabilities around curious mindsets. You know, are your sales team curious about your business? Are they curious about your customers and, and what's really important? And what about the communities that they're in? You know, do they have a narrative and an understanding around some of those challenges that we're dealing with? Do they, uh, are they thinking differently about sustainability in the products and services that they sell? There's got to be a different language that starts to come. We're moving away um, from um, just having those traditional um, selling skills um, that's around, I have a product that you need, um, let me find the marriage of that. We're in an information age where our customers are doing their own homework and making their own decisions about our products and our brands and our people and our services. So our, the job we now have is to be um, information, um, uh, is to take that information that our customers are informing decisions and helping them make sense of that. So this real, you know, ability of being able to make help customers make sense of why is all of this good for you, or are you looking at this information in the right, right way to make sure you're making good judgment calls. So we're playing a different service to sales role, um, and then again, you know, this ability to be more resilient of dealing with complexity. Naturally, we we are we are a team and a, a cohort of people that can deal with rejection, but it's on a whole new level now. Um, how do we actually make sure that our people can do that? Because people deal with people um, and we learn from each other. So what are we doing to make sure that we are creating spaces for people to deal with ambiguity, to deal with complexity, to deal with change? And it really changes the way that you think about how you are investing in your people when you, when you think about some of these words around how you're doing it. And I think the other one is flexibility and adaptability. You know, we are going to have to think about disrupting models we are going to have to think about different um, distribution channels. We are going to have to be thinking differently about how we sell property. As I said, we will now be looking at a blended way of being able to service our customers. Maybe we can work from home um, and service a customer as opposed to, to being on site um, in a sales environment that we never thought we could do, but we, we've proven that we can. What does that actually mean? It requires an element of adaptability in your strategies and your thinking and your people. So, you know, I think there's a lot, there's a lot of change. It's quite exciting. Um, it's quite overwhelming and it is quite scary, but it does need leaders that are, um, it does need leaders in businesses who are willing to think big, who are willing to understand what the risk and reward is. Um, and it is leading with intention and purpose to make sure that we can make those meaningful changes because there is change. And with change comes opportunities, but you, you can't realise that if you're not if you're not set up in a way that you can take advantage of that. And that is at the core of businesses today is you need to have that structure in a way that propels your people um, to be able to get curious and go in, go into it and find those opportunities to change the way that we are that we're operating. Well, Steph, I think um, you've brought it home for us all. And uh, we opened up uh, the sales trends report uh, late last year around systems. And we've got to incorporate all of the variables we've heard today and more. But how do we operationalize it and actually make it practical so when humans interact with humans, we can have really good, uh, meaningful exchange and, and actually generate opportunity together. So there's a lot of positivity here. There's also a lot of, you know, uncertainty too in some ways. But I really want to thank everyone for their contribution.